Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Joe Merrick of Cerebi and John Cartwright to discuss the newly released trailer for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. So let's get started. Alright guys, so Nintendo surprised us with a brand new trailer for these games, and they don't show a ton ton of new things, but they also do show a, a fair bit of new things, and I thought we'd start with Joe, because we actually haven't had you on to give your thoughts about Let's Go yet. So, Joe, what do you think about this trailer and just Let's Go in general? Um, the trailers, they're great. They're, the game looks fantastic graphically. It's got a nice art style, it's crisp, it's Kanto. I just do have a small problem with Let's Go, mm -hmm. and that's the lack of wild battling. I think that was removed unnecessarily, but it's not going to be a continual thing in Pokemon, so I'm fine with it. What about you, uh, uh, John? How, how did you feel about watching these trailers? Yeah, they're all really well produced, and um, it's quite cool to see uh, a little bit more in these trailers from past ones. So last time we got a glimpse of um, the trainer receiving Pikachu and Eevee, and this time we have a couple more scenes from, um, from that scenario. So it's really cool to see that kind of expand a bit more. And um, actually, the cinematics as, as a general look really good. Like, there's one scene where you have this depth of field effect going on with Oak and your rival in the background, mm -hmm. whereas your character's in the foreground. And it's just this really cool cinematic flair that Pokemon's never really quite had. Yeah, I think that's the big thing. I've seen some people complain about the art style and say it doesn't look good, and I can kind of see that, but I also think the style does work for me. I do like the look of it. It's, it's, it's very much its own thing, which I... Which I appreciate. I don't really expect Gen 8 or yeah, Gen yeah Gen 8. I think we're up to now. God, I'm losing track. So many gens. <laughs> um, the next gen to look have this same art style. I think this is going to be very much just for the Let's Go series. Because let's be honest, this is going to be a there's going to be a series of this. There's no way this is not going to be popular. I've heard of so many like exclusive Pokemon Go players. Like, well, now I need to get a Switch. Uh, to play this game, yeah. so this is this is going to do quite well. Um, and it's interesting you mentioned that one scene with Oak and the, and the rival when you're first getting your Pokemon, because there's actually three Pokeballs there, and we know we got Pikachu, we know we got Eevee. Who's in the third ball? And could this indicate? Uh, maybe I'm going into analysis mode too early here, but does this mean we'll actually battle Oak at some point? <laughs> Oh, that would be nice, because that was always a plan in the original Red and Green, to battle Oak. Mm-hmm. So I, that would be nice. Yeah, I thought the whole Kukui battle in Sun and Moon was a great throwback to that. It was, yeah. So what Pokémon do you reckon is going to be in the ball? Volpix. <laughs> Maybe it's the new Pokémon, which is Ooh, in Let's Go and Volpix. Go. Ah. I didn't even think about that one. It could be the new one. Otherwise, like... I love the new look of the gyms. They feel like, you know, I, I love how much detail is being put into them. The fact that there's audience members, the fact that you can see the other trainers getting into place whenever you enter them. There's something, I don't know, makes them a little bit more special in this game. At least it feels like it. Yeah, I, th I think everything's a bit more expressive, actually. Like, uh, even facial animations have fa far more personality than previous games. Like, if you look at Pikachu and Eevee in particular, um, they just have so many animations going on, especially um, when you can get up, up close and personal with them and customize them. They just have so many different idle animations, and it's something we haven't really quite seen before. Uh, but as you say, the gyms in particular are a really good, really good showcase. Like Misty's gym has people diving in the background, um, whereas if you look at the Game Boy games, it's just a big static um, room full of sprites. So we've come such a long way in that sense. I agree with that. Mm hmm. Uh, what, what else has stood out to you, Joe, about these games? But, well, they but they are Gen 7 games in a lovely new HD, beautiful look. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, you can tell from the battles that everything is pretty much as it was, but with a glorious HD, and I just think this is going to be amazing to get older players back in. Absolutely. That, that I think that's the major thing, is that I mean, it even has Andre sort of interested, and he's just been... <laughs> he has no interest in Pokemon whatsoever, uh, ever since the original gens, but this will be a good way to really get them into it, and even with those older players, if they played Go, and we do get Gen 2 Let's Go, or Gen 3 Let's Go, they'll recognize the Pokemon from Go and get the context of it from the original game. 
And as for the catching aspect, it's funny how they didn't focus too much on that in these trailers. They just sort of uh, you know, had a little bit there, but they de definitely focused more on the battles, uh, specifically against um, Misty and Brock, uh, whose models look... I mean, we saw Brock at E3, but Misty's new model, I think she looks great. Uh, it's a really, like, it's sort of like a combination of her original model plus the, new, uh, the, the redesign that she's seen in later games, and I, I think it works quite well. Like, th these are... Again, I like the I like the character designs in this game. Other than the new rival, oh. like, he looks like he should be, he looks like he should be a brat. But he, even in the English trailer, your friendly rival. No, <laughs> I don't want him to be friendly. <laughs> he needs to be a jerk. <laughs> yeah, I'm 100 percent with you with that. Yeah, that's that's my biggest letdown actually. I want this guy to be an utter jerk, and he he just seems way too nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't have to have rivals be jerks. You don't have to, but I think there comes a point where it, it, it just doesn't feel like a rivalry when they're just like, hey, let's fight, yeah! And then <laughs> I want them to be a bit more, like, a bit more intense. Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was an arc to be had with um, Blue and uh, Silver, and I don't see Chase having much of an arc. <laughs> he's, he's just seeing, he just... Hey, hey, we made it. We did it together. And here, here's a few items that since we uh, both made it to uh, Pewter City. And yay, thanks. You know, it's, it's all that kind of stuff, which is fine and all. It's just we've seen it so much more than the jerkish rival. And I don't know. I, I felt like th this was a good time to really get back to this. But this is more of a... I, 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 this does seem like Pokemon with the Darker Edges sanded away, although that might not be possible. I mean, it, it might still have some of those darker elements once we get into the Pokedex. Yeah. True. And um, we actually have a glimpse of Lavender Town, not in the trailer, but um, on the map that was right at the start of the trailer. Mm -hmm. And um, it still looks really similar, like there's still the Ghost Tower. And um, this, this place actually stands out far more than any other place on the map, because it's... Like, Every single tile in this ma in this town is all purple, so I think they're going to maintain that that really dark vibe they had from the original games. Yeah, I think looking at that, looking at the map, all the colours they do match the Super Game Boy colours from Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Red. And that mm. you can see it like the orange of Vermilion City, the mm. light blue of Cerulean City, the grey of Pewter City. I hadn't noticed that. Yeah, that's a really good observation. Like that, that's just great detail. I love when they bring out these super detailed maps, uh, like they had for um, Alola, and you can really just look in it and just point out every little detail that you might want from each of these towns. And the fact that they have the, all 151 Pokémon on this map as well really does like give it breathe the life into it, especially since a lot of them are in the places that you would think. We got Snorlax blocking the way. We got Porygon at the game corner. We got you know, uh, all the Pokemon that you typically see in the uh, uh, Safari Zone, even though that's not the Safari Zone anymore. I, I, I really like the idea behind this. Yeah, I do have a bit of a problem with um, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander all being in the same places, though. Like, how is that contextually going to make sense? When, ah, um... ah, ah, it oh, makes perfect sense. Go. Bulbasaur is in Cerulean City. In mm. Yellow, that's where you picked it up. Charmander is in Route 2425. In Yellow, that's where you picked it up. Squirtle is in Vermilion City. In Yellow, that's where you picked it up. And there is a screenshot which shows a Squirtle being like scolded by a police officer, Officer Jenny. It, and uh -huh. so it seems to follow that very well. So we've got that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, do, do you have a problem with it being the exact same as Yellow, though? Because these aren't exactly remakes. They're kind of... I mean, they're kind of remakes, but they're also reimaginings with new characters. So I kind of hope they would um, have the uh, overworld obtained Pokemon be in different places. I think that's more down to balance, and they just want to keep it as close as possible. I mean, they did still say that it's loosely based on the anime, and that is the that's sort true. of timing Ash got it. Yeah, I mean, it is sort of weird to think about that. Yeah, you can get these Pokemon in the overworld, but that also means you can't catch them in the wild in the same sense as Go, so it is it is an interesting combination between the two of you know, the traditional game and uh, Go's gameplay style that I'm still curious whether how well it mixes. Like, I think it could do well, but I'm also not sure if it'll be... You know, I want the, the wild battles to be uh, still challenging, and I'm not sure if it, if it will be or not, so... 
like I think the uh, legendary battles are the ones that I'm kind of most curious about as far as how the new catching goes because how do you make this as eventful other than just hey here's a pokeball <laughs> yeah that does make sense like with the Mewtwo scene from the previous trailer you'd think about it it's like oh wow this is so epic this is going to be amazing and then it'll just cut to a screen where it's got a circle around it shrinking and growing <laughs> and shrinking and growing it kind of doesn't fit yeah the only thing I can think of is maybe you have to battle it normally in order to get it down to able to just toss pokeballs at it well, if they did that, why don't we do that for every other wild battle? Because <laughs> it would take longer, I guess. I don't know. That would be fine. <laughs> That's my one problem with this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. The thing is, um, there's also, like, if you talk about the expressiveness of Pikachu and Eevee, but I love just how much you can customize them, too. You got outfits, you got hairstyles. Really weird to see on Pikachu, but still <laughs> works. And uh, even more interesting is Eevee ha has uh, something to clarify its gender now, with its uh, the pattern on its tail being a heart shape, uh, just like Pikachu. So I, I like how they're sort of adding to it, and seeing more gender differences is always good. Is always good in my book. Do you reckon the um, Eevee evolutions will also have gender differences? Ooh. It depends. If this gender difference is exclusive to, like, these are essentially new forms of Pikachu and Eevee. People have tried to calculate the stats of a Pikachu from Treehouse, <laughs> and people have tried to calculate the stats, and it hasn't fit. And but that's because people have determined the base stats are higher. So this appears to be a different form of Pikachu and different form of Eevee. Now, if the gender difference is um, the same between normal Eevee, then maybe. But otherwise, it just it's unlikely to be, because I can just see it being the special form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. I'm not entirely sure how you give Pokemon like Vaporeon um, a new tail, because <laughs> the tail is kind of part of you know the whole uh, aquatic design. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I, that is an excellent point. I mean, it is very weird that you know you got this Eevee, but you can't ev you can't evolve it. Uh, which makes it, you know, do you really want it in your party the entire time? I think that's the biggest uh, potential weakness of that Eevee, but I'm sure they'll buff it up in some ways. We've already seen it get double kick. Uh, and, you know, we, we know we can catch other Pikachu and other Eevee in the game in order to get the evolutions. So that's not a huge concern for me, but we'll, we'll see how it all goes. Um, it, it's what's funny is because it is just a remake of Kanto, like there's new stuff to point out, but there's also just not a lot to talk about because yeah we've seen this already <laughs> yeah that's true um there, there are a few elements that um were kind of up for debate until now mm -hmm. um we were sort of under the assumption that there wouldn't be a bike in this game but the bicycle shop in cerulean city is still there like we see it in the in the japanese trailer um but the cycle path is still completely redesigned so i wonder is that shop just there for aesthetic purposes or can we actually get a bike in this game that's a very good question. I mean, do you, do you really need a bike when you can ride on Arcanine? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you do seem to travel fa faster on Arcanine, so yeah. If I had to go by gut feeling, i say it's mostly aesthetic because there doesn't seem to be any purpose. Like, Because you seem to, with the running and jumping on Pokemon to ride them, like, there doesn't seem to be... It doesn't seem to take that long to get anywhere in the game. Unless maybe they will give you the bike and you just zoom super fast in areas for some reason. Sure, why not? <laughs> maybe. It would have been cool if there was like, um, if, if the shop had just closed down or something like that. Like have some sort of context of why you can't get a bike. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems to be open. <laughs> maybe it's a side quest where you actually have to buy Misty a new bike. <laughs> oh, maybe. I, I'd actually like that a lot. <laughs> Uh, it finally, hap finally happens after all these years. <laughs> um, but yeah, there there are a, f a few new things, and I I don't know. I just I like the the dress up aspect, and it it seems at first that you have to be the same outfit. The trainer has to be in the same outfit as the Pokemon, but there is some small scenes both with the tra the previous trailer and uh, how would they structure it here. Is it looks like you can dress up differently from the um from the pokemon itself yes uh, you definitely can yeah okay which is uh which is really cool but it doesn't seem to be as wide open as uh 
the latest Pokemon games, like you can't just choose any outfit. It looks like it has to be a set a set costume and probably only the same costumes that your Pokemon can wear. Yeah, that does sound about right, which is a shame, but it's also fine. This is a remake. This is not meant to be like a new generation. If this was a new generation and they did that, then I'd be like, man, this sucks. But <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have anything else to say about the, the these trailers? Because honestly, I'm sort of tapped. Like, it's, it's cool to see. They're great to uh, get these more these extra details, but it's one of those weird things where the hype cycle is, yeah, I see it. I want to play it, but there's not really much more to really look at other than unless they have like some big new feature. Other than the fact that I guess we don't, we're definitely getting not definitely not getting the Savai Islands. No, it definitely seems to just be stuff from Yellow. That's it. Which just makes me wonder what the post game's going to be like because as much as people go on and on and on about how Gen One were great, they had no post game whatsoever. Hey, you go into a cave and you catch me, you two. Okay, <laughs> they had great? five minute post game. Uh, <laughs> the post the post game as a kid was like, hey, let's catch all the Pokemon. <laughs> that was exactly yeah. That's fine, but now when Game Freak provides something like that with a battle facility and some new areas, people moan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's a really good point, and I actually have no idea what they're going to do for a post game because Kanto, I mean, from this map, it looks like Kanto is more or less the exact same with just a few alterations. And uh, unless they're hiding something off screen, uh, it doesn't seem like there's any new locations to explore. Well, we can see the volcano in Cinnabar Island for the first time in G- a Gen 1 based game. That is a that very is good point, yeah. For, for, for a volcanic island, it's been oddly missing a volcano for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I do love how, like, again, the, the, the detail in this map, you can clearly see the Pokemon Mansion as well, so... I love these things that they put together. Yeah, as far as post-game, doesn't seem like we'll get much other than, I guess, that new Pokemon? Or... I I, I don't know. Like, it'll be... It'll be very interesting to see how the structure works after so long when having so little afterwards, so... We'll see. To speak a little bit more um, about the new Pokemon, do you expect it to be incorporated into the main game or be an event Pokemon? I reckon it's going to be an event Pokemon. So even that may not actually come come into the post game. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. No, my theory is that it's going to be like the distribution of how Duskform Lycanroc was, or Snorlax's Z move was, or mm-hmm. Blaziken's Mega Evolution was, where it's like if you buy the game in the first couple of months, you connect it online, then you can get it. Yeah, yeah. That, that seems like the most likely way around it. Yeah. And you know what, it's actually probably the most logical too, because this is, um, I mean, it's a Gen 7 game, but every Pokemon is from Gen 1, and to suddenly throw in a brand new Pokemon doesn't quite make sense. Not really. Although, again, I would have been cool if they had, you know, other Pokemon from this region, but... Yeah, I agree. uh, I mean, that would have been a a really cool post-game to have, like, all the Pokemon just come in. But uh, I think that's confirmed to not be the case. Yeah, I believe so. Honestly, I didn't even need that. I was just hoping for reverse Gen 2, where we actually go and explore Johto. (laughs) But, uh, well, any other thoughts on these new trailers, the English and Japanese trailers for Pokemon Let's Go? Um, There is one thing which is also on the map. It seems that, like, Mr. Mime, Jinx, Farfetch'd, you know, the ones you could only... and Lickitung, the ones you could only obtain in trades in Gen 1, they are in the wild, if this matches where they are. So you've got Jinx at Seafoam Islands, Farfetch'd in the southeast. Mm-hmm. Which is good to see. Good point. The only one that concerns me is uh, we got, you know, Scyther, Pinsir, Rhyhorn, uh, Mr. Mime, and Lickitung, and Dratini, all in the new um, pl- place where you transfer your Pokemon from Pokemon Go into Let's Go. Uh, rather Go than- Park. Go Park, thank you. Rather than the uh, Safari Zone. So does this indicate that they can only be caught through Go Park? <laughs> or... Not it'd be. Oh, a, I hope not. I, I, it would be a shame if some Pokemon are only catchable through Go, which I think is a bad idea. I don't think Game Freak would do that. I hope not. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the. the it sounds plausible. You know, <laughs> to, they want to encourage you to use Pokemon Go in this. Yeah. I mean, the only Pokemon of that set that I don't have are Rhyhorn and Mr. Mime, but <laughs> it still would suck. Yeah, my uh, my big takeaway from this map is there is no truck by the SSN. 
Ooh. How are we going to get me you? <laughs> well, you have to go up into the clouds above uh, Mount Moon. That's where he's at. <laughs> or, you know, get that wonderful little Pokemon uh, Pokeball Plus accessory. Only, what, 30 bucks? <laughs> 50. 50. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, all right. I think that covers it for our Pokemon Let's Go discussion. So thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And Joe, where can they find you at? Um, you can find me at Cerebi.net or on Twitter at Joe Merrick or at Cerebinet. Perfect. And of course, be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on Pokemon and other things gaming too. Until next time. Bye.